Obviously, so you guys are doing a lot of solutions. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time at Walmart in the past, and it's um, it's sort of well known that John Ferner, the president, likes to say, uh, "Don't show the customer your org chart, yep. right?" Which is if the customer can see the sort of the ninety percent of the iceberg below the surface, something's wrong, right? So, how do you guys think about that in terms of surfacing a solution that's AI backed or AI powered, you know, but at the at the point of sale, right, at the checkout, or you know, these other points of the customer journey that Deepold is supporting? It's cliche, but we've really been on a journey with this AI topic. It's been three and a half years in the making, and it's no secret that we started with um, some business process problems associated with checkout. How do we make it nicer for the, for the consumer? How do we increase the experience? How do we improve the efficiency for the retailer? And how do we make attendance in store more efficient in terms of how they interact with consumers and, and the technology? And what it's quickly taught us is actually the AI is one aspect operationalizing the technology in store is equally as important. So, you know, I, I use the shrink analogy. If, if you, you're able to detect someone is stealing at checkout, then what do you do with it? And actually we've spent a Sirens, lot of time. Police, right? Yeah, exactly. Like electrified net drops Get from him. the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's interesting because a lot of markets, they don't want their attendants to intervene in that situation because it's potentially dangerous. So the kind of the, the soft operations around the technology has almost been as demanding as developing the technology itself. But what I would also say is retailers are really looking for a longer term vision of AI. And what we've really been focused on is how do we provide our retail customers with a, an open holistic platform that gives them the flexibility to go on their own journey? Because every retailer will have slightly different priorities in terms of what AI they want to do first. And, and so we've been working very hard on an open platform that means they can build their own ecosystem of partners. You know, we're not going to be the market leader in every type of AI. So how do we partner with He's lots of modest. different AI, <laughs> AI uh, suppliers to build the right ecosystem for each retailer. And I think the personalization of AI is really, really interesting. Yeah. So flip that over uh, to the e-com version of that, right? Um, is it easier in e-com, right? Because you don't have the, the challenge of physicality, right? And the way we as tribal mammals, you know, sort of like <laughs> interact with people and objects. <laughs> I think that's really mean. That's <laughs> mean as a question. <laughs> Was that a little geeky? I love right? this conversation. But you know what I mean? Like without, is that, does it removing that sort of need to be, you know, sort of correct physically, right? In terms of the way I, a I customer further, interacts yeah. with e-commerce, right? I would go further than e-com. In, in the end, um, you ask whether it's, it's okay to surface the AI to the customer. I think as a customer, if we look at our stuff, if we, if we, take, if we put on our customer, uh, customer Google glasses, we walk into a store, are we disturbed by something that is labeled AI? Definitely not, because everyone uses it now, everyone's checking out. Like, is it something that we find somehow unusual? No. Is it a value add? Not at all. Do I care whether a cool solution is designed with AI? Do I care whether the chatbot I'm interacting with is AI? I yeah. don't care. Yeah. I care about a good interaction, about a meaningful interaction, about value, a personalized right? interaction. I care about the value it gives me. Yeah. And I think it's, it's totally okay to label it done with AI. What's much more important is to design solutions, to design things that actually matter to consumers. Yeah. And that where it comes to, I actually have a question for you in a minute. That's where I think it comes to also the organizational question of how do you tackle AI? Yeah. You say you built this ecosystem, I think it's smart. The question is as a retailer, as a manager, how do I find the right people to apply this new toolkit? It's a new skill set. I just, I, I use this analogy where I say, you can give me a, a toolbox and a workshop, and then if you drive your car into that workshop, I'm still not a car mechanic. Yeah. So I'm not going to be able to fix it. So we need to find the people that have this sort of like creative mindset of understanding the different tools they now get, yes. and then apply it to real business problems or apply it so that it actually generates customer value. Yeah. And that's sort of my question. How do you, like in your organization, how do you select the people that actually design these, solu uh, these solutions? Like what's the skill set you're looking for in your organization? Yeah, it, it's a really good question. And it's been a, a big challenge for us because we are a, let's say a traditional technologist where we're providing hardware, software services. This is a completely different domain that, we're nor that we normally operate in. So we've, we've heavily leveraged a partner network um, to really jumpstart our capability in this space. And then as we started to see success, we then started to bring our own talent and our own resource into the organization. But it does sit kind of at a kind of a crossroad to what we would do normally. And you've almost got to break it out as an incubator within the organization because you need to move at, at speed. You need to 
to, to have the agility within the team and the organization. You can't get bogged down in the processes that you might attribute to a piece of hardware that's been you know, evolved over a 20 year period. This is new and, and you've got to treat it separately. And, and it's cliche, but you've got to put the human element back into the artificial intelligence. Yes. It's really easy to get bogged down in the technicalities of the solution and forget what we're trying to do here, which is to make the human experience easier, better, more efficient, yeah. more pleasurable. Yeah.